How good it is to be in the house of the Lord. I'm so excited to be here in church with you, with every one of you. It's so great to just do life together, to bless marriages, to, to bless one another is what we did today. And I just encourage you throughout the week um, to just call each other up and just begin to encourage each other, meet each other for coffee, uh, for cakes, coffee and cakes, my favorite. Call me up for coffee and cakes. <laughs> I love it. And yeah, so, and call us as your pastors as well. If you're struggling in anything or in any area of your life, don't struggle alone. Don't struggle alone. Call, call, call us or call one of the leaders and we would love to meet up with you for dinner, for lunch, for breakfast, for coffee and cake. <laughs> amen. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, we're going up to the next level. We are going up to the next level in Jesus' name. Um, about a month back, a few of us went down to Singapore for a conference. And it was called Kingdom Invasion. And it was an excellent conference. It was an excellent conference. It just, it inspired us to say the least. It was just so great to see like thousands of people in, 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 in the expo and and as faith begin to rise, healings begin to take place. I think it reached almost about 2,000 healings or something like that. Hundreds of people coming to the front and giving their lives to Jesus. And I tell you, it was like salt down my throat. As I just began a hunger and desire for more of God, for more of His presence, for more of His power, for more of His anointing, not only in our lives, but in your lives as well. That as a church, that God would take us to another level. And I've just been seeking God and seeking God and say, God, take us to the next level. There's so much more that is available for us. There's so much more. It's a bigger vision. It's a bigger dream. And I believe God has placed this vision in our heart. No, that's not so that it can die, but so that it can come to pass so that it can come to pass you see I'm tired of reading about revivals in the past D.L. Moody Charles Finney Catherine Kuhlman and what amazing miracles and what times they had I want to see revival here right here and right now in our country Malaysia I don't just want to die one day and then go to heaven and see the fullness and the glory of God I want to see heaven invade earth right here and right now how many of you are with me I don't want to just see our nightclubs filled with young people wasting their lives away being taken over by drugs, by sex, by alcohol, all kinds of things that's going on out there. I want to see the church filled with men and women of God, worshipping God, speaking of God's goodness. I want to see packed with thousands, with hundreds of thousands of people running to the front, giving their lives to Jesus, being made disciples of Christ. I believe this day is now and the time is here. The day is now, the time is here. And I believe God is calling each and every one of us to go to the next level, to move up to the next level. There will truly be the salt of the earth. That when people meet us, you don't even have to talk to them. They will see what is it that's on your life. I want that. I want what's on your life. That we're so salty that they just... What, what is it? There's something on you that I just don't know what it is. That will truly be the light of this world. That as we step into a place, darkness will have to flee. It will have to flee. There will be no struggle. They will flee in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And that is the church that God is calling us to be. We're not here to play church. Not here to just mingle jingle with a few cool people and there's lots of cool people here. We're not here to be entertained by the music or get inspired and motivated by the preaching of God's word. We're here to be the church. We're here to be the church. And we're here to be what Jesus is, what Jesus was when he walked on us. What did Jesus do as he walked on us? He brought the kingdom, the manifestation of the kingdom of God everywhere he went. Wherever he went, bam, heaven was unleashed. People were healed. The blind saw, the lame walked, the deaf heard, the dead was raised from the grave. Demons fled, they trembled in his presence. He fed the multitudes. And what did Jesus say? Whosoever believes in me, whosoever, that is a requirement, whosoever, who believes in Jesus Christ today? Who believes that God sent his son, his name is Jesus, and he came to this earth, he died on the cross to pay the penalty of sin and death in our life. And if we believe in Jesus Christ, then whosoever believes in me, the things that I do, the healing, 
the demons that have been cast out, the things that I do, they will do also, and even greater works. Amen. Amen. So we're believing God for a fresh move. We're believing God for power. And so I've been going before God and asking God, how, how do I lay hold of more? How do we lay hold of more? How do we go to the next level in you? And, and I've been telling God, God, teach me your ways that I may walk in your truth. And I believe in order to go to the next level, I feel God beginning to speak in my heart and I kept, kept hearing him over and over again to pray and to fast. Begin to pray and to fast, not just pray, but to fast as well. I know some of you are like, ah, yo, I knew I shouldn't have woken up and come to church today. <laughs> should have slept in. La. Fasting and praying and all that. That is for the super spiritual people. That's not for me. I am party out there. I am celebrations all the way. And there is a place for that. There is a place for celebration. The Bible calls us to remember His goodness. Especially end of the year, it's a great time to enjoy the goodness of our God. To celebrate with friends, um, with family, to come together, celebrate love, to celebrate family, to celebrate what it means to be blessed by God, to be favoured by God. And we enjoy celebrations. I tell you, in this church, a lot of us throw the best parties, the best Christmases party, the best parties, the best cooks, the best hosts and hostess. But there's also a time, there's also a season to pray and to fast. To pray and to fast. You see, we, uh, God told Joshua in Joshua 1 verse 8, if you are to meditate on my word and do everything, do all that is written in it, and you will be prosperous and successful. So this is not a buffet. Oh, I like prosperity. I like healing. I like love and joy. Fasting and praying is just not my thing. We're here to do all that is written in the word of God. Amen. Amen. So if you have your Bibles with you, turn with me to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. And as you're turning there, I'm just going to give a short background study on the passage we're about to read. Matthew chapter 5, Jesus teaches us the B attitude. The B attitude. The B attitude. How we ought to live out our Christian life. The basics of our Christian walk. And so in Matthew chapter 6, he talks about three things. He brings it down to three areas of our life. And that is our giving, our praying, and our fasting. And I believe it's like a threefold call. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 12 talks about a threefold call that is not easily broken. Now I know a lot of us are great at giving. We're great at blessing others. We're great at helping the poor. We're great at giving our tithes and our offerings. Some of us here are good at praying. We're good at praying. Some of us here not yet, but we know it's important. We do, we do, we do want to pray. We want, to, we want to have a better prayer life. But not all of us here are great at fasting. I can put my hand up for that. No, no, because it's not an easy thing to do. And I believe that as we couple all these three things in our giving, in our praying, and in our fasting, nothing, no thing, will be able to stand against you. To be able to stand against you. If you go down further to Matthew chapter 6, if you go down slightly further, um, Jesus says to his disciples, as we begin to wrap up his message, seek ye first the kingdom of the God. Seek ye first the things of God. Seek ye first the, the ways of God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And then all these things. You don't have to worry. You don't have to struggle. You don't have to fight for it. All these things. All. What is your heart's desire? God says, all these things shall be added unto you. Nothing will be able to stop God's work as we're going to seek first the things of God. So, um, and if you look at these three things, if you go back and you read, I'm not going to go through the whole of Matthew chapter 6. I'm just going to focus mainly on fasting today. Um, but if you go through Matthew chapter 6, you notice it doesn't say if you give, if you pray, if you fast. It says when you give, when you pray. Are you getting this? When you fast. So it's not if you have some loose change in your pocket, I'm going to give an offering. It's not if I find the time in my busy schedule, then I'm going to pray. If I feel convicted enough, motivated enough to fast, then I'll skip a meal. 
these things is what Jesus calls us to do as part of our Christian life. So Matthew, Matthew chapter 6 verse 16 Moreover, when you fast, say when you fast, when you fast. do not be like the hypocrites with a sad countenance. For they disfigure their faces that they may appear to men to be fasting. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you fast, say when you fast, anoint your head, wash your face, so that you do not appear to men to be fasting, but to your Father who is in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Will reward you opening. So again, when we fast, not if we fast. Why do we fast? We don't fast so that we appear to be spiritual. Oh, I'm fasting. Why you look so like tired and oh, I'm fasting. Like, I'm praying. No, it's not so we appear to others that we are super spiritual. It is so that we are spiritual. It's so that we are strong in our spirit. Why do we fast? Because when we fight battles in the spirit we fight battles in the secret place where god is god will reward us out in the open out in the natural out in the natural you see a lot of us are trying to fight a spiritual battle through natural means let me say that again a lot of us are trying to fight a spiritual battle but we're doing it through natural means <laughs> you get what i mean so for example, David, before he went and, and, and before he took down Goliath, what did he say? What did he shout at Goliath? You come against me with sword, spear and javelin. That means you come against me in the natural. With the things that are natural, but I come against you in the name of the Lord God Almighty. He goes on to say, all those gathered here, everyone will know that it's not by sword or spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's. Who's, whose battle is it? It is the Lord's battle and He will give all of you into our hands. You see, whether or not we like it, we are in a battle. Some of us don't even know that. We are in a battle. When Jesus comes and he, he, he deals with the devil once and for all, then there's a big celebration, a big party that's going to be in heaven and all of us are going to be there. Hey, I can't wait to go for that awesome party. But now here on earth, we're in a battle. You're either for God or you already are against him. You're either walking in light or you're living in darkness. You're either in camp Jesus. Hua. I watched G.I. Joe yesterday. Hua. Hua. I love that. Or you're in the, or in the enemy's camp. Bua, whatever it is. And so you're either for God or you're against Him. We are in a battle. We're in a battle. And it's not a natural battle that we're in. We're in a spiritual battle. We're in a spiritual battle. See, some of us, when we talk of the devil, we kind of overestimate him. We watch all these scary horror movies. I hate to watch those horror movies because my mind just works over time. Be calling Clarence and say, Dal, come back. I can hear sounds in the next room. <laughs> like, that's it. I'm not going to let the devil play in my mind. So they watch all this horror and we overestimate the power of the forces of darkness and how we Christians are fighting against him with our, you know, our menial tunes. This priest coming to cast out the spirit and then, you know, in exorcist and instead of the spirit leaving, the priest himself dies. <laughs> what <laughs> is going on? <laughs> I mean, there are demons. I'm scared. Don't go near them. You know, and we overestimate the power of darkness. Some of us underestimate it as well. Now listen to this. Some of us, when we underestimate him, we tend to use very naturalistic way of thinking. For example, you're at work and there's this person in the office who is just pure mean. Just always ridicule, ridiculing you, putting you down, making you feel bad about yourself and all these kind of things. And you, then you get irritated, you get angry. What is this? What is this? We've got a bad attitude, this person. And then you're there fighting with this person, arguing. You say, no, I, that's it. I'm leaving my work. I'm going to my next job. And so you're in a different circle, different set of people. But the same thing comes up. There's a person there who's mean and they're irritating you and they're putting you down and trying to, to force. What, what is it? Notice it's not about the people. It is not a, about the natural. There's a greater influence. There's a greater spiritual force that is at work in that person's life. And that's why the Bible says, pray for your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Because they don't know what they are dealing with. They don't know that their lives are in bondage. And this is, this is even in the church here. We Christians are not all that. 
And that's why it's fine church splitting, contention, this unity, the slander that's going on. Somehow, they've opened the door. Maybe it's through past generational things. Maybe it's through curses as operation in their life. It could be pride. It could be a hidden sin. It could be uncontrollable anger. The, the, the Bible says a person who has no control, who lacks self-control, is like a city whose walls is broken down. The enemy can easily come in to manipulate and to influence. And so don't overestimate him. Don't overestimate our enemy. Don't underestimate him. Ephesians 6 verse 12, For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in the dark world, against evil spirits in the heavenly places. I like my dad's illustration when he talks about the devil. He said the devil is disarmed. You know how in the in scripture it says the devil is disarmed. Um, so he doesn't have any arm. <laughs> the devil's defeated, so he doesn't have any feet. So it's just a stump with a big mouth that likes to spit out lies, that likes to spit out deception. And when you believe these lies and deception, did God really say you can't do that? It's not written in the Bible. Did God really say that you can't do this? And he lies to you. And he deceives you. And if you allow him entrance into your life, he comes in and he's, there's a stronghold in your life you find after a while that it's not broken. That cannot be broken by pure willpower. The enemy has gained entry into your life. And so think with me. Think with your life. Think about your life right now. So the Holy Spirit highlights different areas of your life. What are some of the areas that the enemy has come in subtly without you noticing to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And notice when a thief comes to steal, he doesn't announce, Hello! I'm here to steal your gold necklace! Last year, um, our house got broken. Was it last year? Last year, our house got broken into. And you know, the first thing that ha when, when it happens, you're in shock. Because it just never would have crossed your mind that something like this would happen. Went out for lunch, came back, the house is broken in. All our jewelry, all our gold is gone. So... And now we don't even bother locking the door because there's nothing to steal anymore. <laughs> so God. But anyway, praise God for victory that is coming our way. But, but that's what the enemy does. He comes in to steal when you least expect it. You're busy with your life. You're busy. Maybe you're focusing on someone's this offense that's going on. You're busy doing your work. And, and you don't notice the enemy coming to steal. And then he's like, hey, where's my joy? I used to be happy when I came to church and I was just, this would be the joy of the Lord. But I find that my joy is missing. Where's my peace? Where's my peace? No, I, I can't sleep at night. Just the thoughts that are going through my mind on and on, the problems, the difficulties that I face. What happened to my peace? Where's my time gone? No, I told, I wanted to pray and, and, and spend time with God and now, it's already night, it's 12 o'clock, I'm tired and I need to sleep. Where's my time gone? And that's how the devil works to come in and steal. And then from there, he kills. Kills your hope. He kills and then finally comes in to destroy. He is to destroy your life. But let us not be those who walk in fear. Let me tell you, if you notice that the devil has, has had come in to steal and to kill in your life, let me tell you, God is greater. God is greater than whatever the devil has tried to do. God will return to you double fold. As you begin to apply the message today, as you begin to pray and as you begin to fast, let me tell you, God will go into battle for you. God is going to go into battle for you. The, the Bible says, so the enemy comes like a flood. God will raise a standard. A standard is a banner of victory, a banner of victory. Though the enemy comes in and like a flood, God will come and God will raise a banner over us. God will raise a banner over us. The Bible also says, heaven suffers violence. We suffer attacks every now and then. But let me tell you, the violent take it by force. We're not here to shrink back. We're here to move forward. We're here to advance the kingdom of God. We're here to prosper. We're here to be a success in whatever we do. We're here not to shrink, but to, but to expand and to grow. And I believe God's word is for expansion today. 
you're going to be you're beginning you're going to begin to see your influence grow your territory expand your capacity increase in the name of Jesus amen so what is fasting fasting is not dieting some of us i think i want to fast lah we got a bit of love handles in around the corner Fasting is not dieting. If you're going to fast, for example, if you're going to skip lunch during work, then spend time to pray. Spend time to meditate on the word. Go maybe to a quiet corner where you know no one's going to be there in a meeting room where there's no meetings going on. Just go in, spend that time to begin to pray and meditate on God's word. So to to fast is to abstain from physical food for spiritual purpose. You're denying, you're crucifying your flesh. And as you do that, you're strengthening your spirit. So you may be a small, tiny person, maybe an eighty-year-old lady and weighing a hundred pounds. But let me tell you, you can be a giant in the spiritual world. You pray not to move God when you when you pray and fast not to move God, but when you pray and fast, you are moved. You are realigned into the purposes and the will of God. Sometimes I think in life we get so cluttered in our spirit. Yeah, I know I can be like that. It's just noise all the way from the time I wake up. My kids like mommy, and then I'm driving them to school. Faster, eat your food, do your homework, and it's night. And you're like, oh my gosh! Even in the night, the sleeping is so. Mommy, I want to sleep with you. No, go and sleep in your room now. <laughs> and it's just a lot of clutter. It's a lot of noise when we fast. When we begin to fast and pray, it clears the channel. It's like God speaking all the time, but some of us can't really hear Him, huh? Because our antennas are kind of short like that. We're trying to hear, like ah, I can't hear what God's saying. So when we fast and pray, it unclutters our spirit, and our spiritual antennas go way up high. And then you, mommy, and then you, and it comes a moment where. I hear you. I sense you. You are near. So there's three type of fast. There's the normal fast, and that is we we just drink um, liquids like water or juice, and we don't eat anything at all. That's the normal fast. There's the absolute fast. Absolute fast is when you don't go, uh, when when you when you go on without food and without water. Now, if you're going to do an absolute fast, I I recommend don't do it further than three days because our bodies naturally cannot survive for longer than three days without water. Okay, uh, Moses fasted for forty days and forty nights without food and water, but Moses had a burning bush experience. So unless you got a burning bush experience and you call us to come over because we want to see the burning bush, then don't fast for longer than three days if you're going to do an absolute fast, a dry fast, as some people say. Third type of fast is a partial fast. That means you omit certain food or certain types of food on a scheduled time. For example, eat one meal a day only. You fast until six or seven in 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 the in the in the night, and then you have your dinner. That's a Daniel kind of fast. That means you only eat fruits and vegetables. Uh, Elijah fasted this way as well. Certain type of grains. John the Baptist uh, fasted this way. So some tips where before you go into fast, you need to prepare yourself. Like if you're addicted to caffeine and you can't and you can't go without caffeine, then maybe the week before you should just slowly taper it down. Get a prayer partner, someone who's who's spiritually strong, and say, "Believe in me that I'm going to do this fast, so that they can call on you, uh, encourage you in your fast. Maybe you need to clear out your cupboard, all those those sweets and all in your drawers. You need to get rid of it if you're going to go on that fast. Before you go on that fast, how long should you fast? Be led on by the Spirit of God on that." Maybe pray about it. How long you should fast? But usually, until you reach a place of breakthrough in a natural, or until God says enough, stop for now, and then later continue again. It may take days, it may take weeks, it may take months. But let me encourage you to press in because how hungry are you? How hungry? The real question really is how hungry are you? Are you tired of where you are? Are you tired? And I came to a place where I'm tired. I'm sick. And tired of being in this spiritual lethargy. I want to go forward. I want to move forward. And I thank God for all that He's He's blessed us with. I thank God for that. We will not be here for if not God for what not God has done in our lives. But let me tell you, I want to move to the next level, and I want all of us to move to the next level as well. So the question is, how hungry are you? Let me assure you, when you fast and you pray, 
you will experience breakthrough. You will experience breakthrough. It may not be immediately, but it will come. It will come. Amen. What are the benefits of fasting? I'm going to just speed through this. So stay with me. Ten benefits of fasting. There's more than that, but I'm just going to focus on these ten. Number one, benefits of fasting. And remember, we're using spiritual tools. We're fighting a spiritual battle. And in the natural, you will see breakthrough. So we're going to look at that in all ten of these. Number one, uh, it breaks poverty over your life. It breaks poverty over your life. How many are stuck in a cycle of lack, of debt? Fasting breaks poverty over your life. Job, when he lost everything, he began to fast and pray. And God returned to him a double fold of what he lost. Joel chapter 2, the children of Israel fast and pray. And this is what the Lord said, said to them after they prayed and fast. And I believe this is a prophetic word for many of us here who have been struggling in the area of lack in their finances and, 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 and their income and whatever not. So, this is what God said, Joel chapter 2 verse 23, Be glad, be glad, be glad, O people of Zion. Rejoice in the Lord your God, for He has given you the autumn rains in righteousness. He sends you abundant showers, both autumn and spring rains, as before. The threshing floors will be filled with grain. The vats will overflow with new wine and oil. How many of you love this, the words that he's using? Filled, overflow with new wine and oil. I will repay you for the years the locusts have eaten. And verse 26, you will have plenty to eat until you are full. You will praise the name of the Lord your God who has worked wonders for you. Never again will my people be shamed. Now some people say, oh, but you know, poverty and lack, you know, this is a blessing from God really, you know, because it keeps you humble. That is a lot of rubbish. Because one of the things that happens when someone lacks, when someone walks in poverty is that they feel ashamed, isn't it? And that is not how God wants His children to feel. I would never want my children to feel ashamed. And He says it here in His word, Never again will my people be shamed. Then you will know that I am in Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and there is no other. And He says it again a second time, Never again will my people be shamed. Let me tell you, some of you who are struggling in your finances, Never again will you be shamed. Never again will you be shamed. The second reason why we fast and pray is for protection from our enemies. Protection from our enemies. Esther chapter 4. Esther, the children of Israel um, were about to be wiped out. Haman and his men were coming to kill them, to slaughter them, to kill them from the youngest to the oldest, to wipe out the entire nation of Israel. And so Esther calls the whole nation into a three-day fast, a three-day of absolute fast. No drinking, no eating, just go before the Lord and seek and cry Him out. And when they did that, immediately the tables were turned. And on that day, they were supposed, on the day that they were supposed to be killed, God allowed them to stand in strength and now they went out and they killed and they slaughtered all those who were against them. And so if you want protection from your enemies, begin to fast and pray. Why we fast and pray? Number three, salvation for entire household. How many of you been praying for your family, for your loved ones to be saved? Begin to fast and begin to pray. Acts chapter 10, Cornelius is fasting and praying. An angel appears to him and he says, I've heard your prayer. The Lord God has heard your prayer. He's seen your giving. And immediately Peter comes. Peter preaches the word and the entire household is saved. They are baptized. They are filled by the Spirit of God. So you want to see your family saved? Get on your knees and begin to pray and fast. You want to receive revelation from God? You know, there's been a time where you used to have fresh revelation from God, fresh vision, and you want that once again. You want to hear the voice of God. You want to see in freshness of spirit. Acts chapter 9 verse 18, Paul fasted and prayed for three days. And after that, Ananias was sent and scales fell off his eyes. He once again, he, he had a fresh revelation of who God was. And he began his ministry. He began his ministry. Another reason to fast and pray, number four, uh, number five, to receive power, to receive power from on high. 
Luke chapter 4, verse 1 to 2. Jesus fasted. I mean, come on, if Jesus fasted, people, <laughs> if he had to fast, I think all of us need to go on a fast. Receive power from on high. Luke chapter 4. It talks about after Jesus comes out of the wilderness, after for 40 days he's been fasting. And this is a great word, let me tell you. He comes out, he returned. I like the word return. Some of you are going to get on your knees and begin to pray and fast. And when you return to that same situation, things around may look the same. But let me tell you, you are different. You are different. You are filled with the power of God. And you're going to watch as things begin to change and break. And you begin to see things move in the name of Jesus. So God, um, sorry, Jesus returned in the power of the Holy Spirit and news of Him spread. You didn't have to go around saying, I am super powerful. No, news of him spread on how the power of God was on him. Number six, if you're struggling with grief in your spirit, there's a spirit of brokenness, a sadness, a depression that is on you and you can't seem to get out of it. You can't seem to get out of it. First Samuel chapter 1 verse 7, Hannah struggled with grief. She couldn't bear a child and um, the wife, the other wife of her husband used to ridicule her and mock her and say, you are blah, 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 blah. And she was struggling with grief. And what did she do? Did she go and tell her girlfriends, you know, that woman, I tell you. She got on her knees and she began to fast and she began to pray. And God came through for her in a supernatural way. Number seven. You need to pray and fast if you want to know the will of God for your, for your life. Some of us, what's the will of God? What am I supposed to do? Begin to fast and pray. Acts chapter 13, the disciples fasted and prayed and Paul and Barnabas were chosen. They fasted and prayed again and they were sent. So you need to fast and pray to know the will of God. Once you know the will of God, don't immediately go out. This is the will of God. I'm going to do this. Um, Nehemiah prayed and fasted for four months before he actually did his work, which um, some Bible scholars say for 52 days. Four months of fasting and praying. How many of us do the opposite? We pray for one day and then we think, let's see, for one year we're going to, you know. So we need to pray and fast to know the will of God. And after praying and fasting, uh, uh, then only go out and do what God has called you to do. Number eight. Pray and fast to solve problems. See, problems, some of us here uh, have so many problems that it weighs us down. It's like a heavy burden that is on our shoulders. Isaiah 58 verse 6. Fasting and praying lifts heavy burdens. Number nine, struggling with sin. Or if you know of someone who's struggling with sin, begin to fast and pray for them. You see, You see, a lot of us maybe love, we love God. Our heart is for God, but there's a certain area in our life that we've been struggling with. And it's like a cycle that can't be broken. You know in your willpower, you want to break it, but you just can't. I tell you, it's a stronghold in your life. And you need to begin to fast and pray. You know, when, when the, that, that spirit that couldn't be cast out, what is it, Matthew 18? I think it's Matthew 18, I'm not sure. And the spirit that couldn't be cast out of that boy. And Jesus talks about, and the disciples, why couldn't we cast out this demon from the boy? And when Jesus came, of course, he immediately cast it out. He says, you know, it's, um, it's because of unbelief. So your faith, of course, have to be in operation. And as well, he said, however, some things will not go out without prayer and fasting. There are some spirits that have such a leech on you, such a, such a hold on you over someone else's life that you know of. Such a hold on you. It's a stranglehold. And you can't, Get out of it. You need to begin to pray and fast. And then only you are going to begin to see these things broken in the name of Jesus. Isaiah chapter 58. I'm just going to read this. Isaiah 58 verse 6. And this is the kind of fast God wants. To loose the bonds of wickedness. There's a bond of wickedness over you. To undo the heavy burden. To let the oppressed go free. You're oppressed. This is an area of your life that you're, you're stuck in. You're like a prisoner in it. You're held captive by it. And that you break. That you break. You break it. In the name of Jesus. Break every yoke of bondage. And lastly, why we fast and pray is for more of the presence of God. 
more of the presence of God. First Samuel chapter 7 verse 6, the children of Israel, the Ark of Covenant had been in the land of the Philistines and, they began, and the Ark of Covenant represents the presence of God. So they're about to bring it back to their land and before they bring it back to their land, they fast and they pray. David in Psalm 42, I'm going to read this psalm. It's a beautiful psalm. And some of you are going to hear your voice in this. You're going to hear your voice in this. Psalm chapter 42. As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the God of the living. When can I go and meet with God? My tears have been my food day and night, while people say to me all day long, Where is your God? These things I remember as I poured my soul, how I used to go to the house of God under the protection of the Mighty One, with shouts of joy and praise among the festive throng. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise Him, my Savior and my God. My soul is downcast within me. Therefore, I will remember you. And in the midst of His fast, in the midst of His prayer, something shifts and God reminds him from the land of Jordan, the heights of Hermon, from Mount Mizar, deep calls to deep. From the depths of his soul, he connects with the depths of God. Deep calls to deep. In the roar of your waterfalls, all your waves and breakers have swept over me. The Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime and in the night. His song shall be with me. So if you're struggling to feel the presence of God, there was a time where you used to enjoy, used to, to enjoy the presence, the freedom of being in His presence. Begin to fast and begin to pray. Begin to seek the Lord. Begin to open your mouth and begin to pray. And as we do that, I believe we're going to see angels get activated on your behalf. God moves into action. The things that have used to bind you is going to be broken in the name of Jesus. You're going to birth things. They birth things in the natural. Things that you've been holding in your heart is going to be birthed forth supernaturally. The things of the invisible world are going to, to, to become visible. Let's begin to get on our knees and pray and fast. And pray and fast. So although God is sovereign, He can do whatever He wants, whenever He wants, however He wants, through whoever He wants, God is sovereign. He still waits for you and me to get on our knees. I'm going to fast. I'm going to pray. I close with this. Elijah, remember God told him it's going to rain. God said, Elijah, the time is now, it's going to rain. But did it rain immediately? No, Elijah had to do his part. You know what he did? He climbed to the top of Mount Carmel. Now climbing to the top, now the Bible is very specific, to the top. Now it speaks about leaving your comfort zone, where you're comfortable at. I mean this whole comfort zone. It talks about leaving this comfort zone. It talks about pressing forward. It talks about endurance, perseverance. Effort. He talks about effort. And finally he reaches to the top. He climbs to the top of the mountain. And what does he do? He gets down to the ground. He gets down on the ground and this speaks about humility. And he bows his head between his knees. And he talks about submission. And as we begin to pray and fast, it brings us to a place of humility. It brings us to a place of submission before our God. And he begins to pray and begins to pray. And he just doesn't, doesn't lose, lose, um, he doesn't stop at just once or twice, but he begins to pray and begins to pray and he begins to pray, begins to pray, begins to pray, begins to pray until he sees a cloud and he knew that his breakthrough was coming. His breakthrough was coming. Reminds me of the scripture in, Se in Second Chronicles. God said, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, 
and I will hear from heaven. I will forgive them and I will heal their land. How many of you have been, for a long time now, you've been praying for the salvation of your loved ones? Let me encourage you to couple it with fasting. There seems to be a veil that has covered their eyes and the more you seem to preach to them, the more they seem to resist and the worst thing seems to be happening. Let me tell you, you're on a verge of breakthrough. Don't give up. Don't give up. You know, couple your prayer life with fasting and no thing will stand against you. Some of you have been struggling with an area of sin, a stronghold in your life that can just cannot be broken. Let me tell you, no amount of counselling, no amount of rehab, and praise God for counselling and rehab. I'm not against these things. I'm not against these things. But sometimes we try this method and that method and this idea and that thought and we, what we're doing is we're just putting a, like a plaster, a band-aid on something. A temporary solution for a deeper issue. God wants you to go down, dig deep into your roots, you know, pray and fast and bam, poison's going to go down into it and you're never going to struggle with these issues ever again. Some of you are walking in lack for a long time. It's been the history of your family through the generations. I don't know what it is. But there just seems to be lack in your life. You can't seem to get out of debt. God's saying, begin to pray and fast and I will send the rains. I will bring the abundance. It's not won through strength, through might. It's not through the intellect of man. You can hire the best dream team, the best marketing team. But it's not going to break over your life, let me tell you, unless you get down on your knees and begin to fast and begin to pray. Some of you hunger for more of God, for more of His presence. Oh, there was a time when you overflowed with His love. And somehow that well has gone dry. Begin to fast and begin to pray. Let's stand to our feet. Just begin to connect with God now. Connect with God. Connect with God. Connect with Him. God made you for intimacy. He didn't make you so that you can... Part of His will is for us to do His work on this earth. But let me tell you, God created you for intimacy. He created you for love. No, we don't, like me and Clarence, we have children not because we want someone to cut the grass, to wash the plates for us. We have children because we, we desire love, out of love, and for love. And you were created for love. You were created for intimacy. And God is calling you, come up to a higher level with me. Come up to a higher level with me. Don't be satisfied with the things in your past. You, you, have, you have experienced great things in your past. Times of revival, times of enlightenment, times of revelation. But let me tell you, there's a new day. There's a greater level. There's a higher level of anointing. There's a greater presence of the Holy Spirit that is going to be birthed into your life. That is going to break forth into your life. It's going to flood into your situation. And everywhere you meet, everywhere you go, you are flowing in the Spirit of God. You are moving in the Spirit of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Just begin to speak in tongues. Oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, our hearts are yours, our hearts are yours, our hearts belong to you, our hearts belong to you, you are the lover of our soul, you are the lover of our soul, you are our all in all, you are our heart's desire, you are our all in all, it is you, it is you, it is you, it is you.
is you, Lord. It is you, Lord. Oh, beloved. Oh, beloved. Oh, my beloved is mine. And I am yours, oh, Lord. Oh Lord, we desire for greater revelation of you. We desire for your presence to fill us. Fill us. Fill us. Bring the rains. Bring the rains. Bring the floods. Oh, bring the floods. And let it break every yoke of bondage. Every yoke of bondage in the name of Jesus. Be broken. Every oppression. Be broken. Every depression. In the name of Jesus. Be broken over your life. Every thoughts of suicide. In the name of Jesus, we come against you. Every spirit of lack, every spirit of deception, every spirit of lies, we come against you in the name of Jesus. We come against you in the name of Jesus. Let the life of Christ rise up right now. The life of Christ, the light of Christ shine upon us right now. It's your set free. Set free. Set free in the name of Jesus. Set free in the name of Jesus. Thank you for deliverance. Thank you for deliverance. Thank you, Lord. You are our strength. You are our joy. You are our exceedingly great reward. You are our portion. You are our shield. You are our son. Oh, Lord God, we love you. We love you. We love you. Come make your home in us. Forgive us our sins. Strengthen us, show us, teach us your way, that we may walk in you. Show us your way. You now I felt, I just feel this like some of us, as we spend this time, this time in the, the, this, this quiet time with God, as we begin to rediscover that place of intimacy. In Matthew chapter 16, verse 19, God, I feel God saying this to you, that He will give you keys the kingdom of God. He'll give you keys. Whatever you bind on us is going to be bound in heaven. It is done. Whatever you loose on us is loosed in heaven. It is done. It shall come to pass. It shall come to pass. Come on, give God praise. Give God praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.